Hello, this is Buon from Buon.tv, and today I'm going to be doing a first impressions review of Final Fantasy XIV for the PC platform. This particular first impressions video was made because I had a lot of people ask me to do it, um, and I'm not calling it a full review because this is an MMORPG, which stands for Massively Multiplayer Online Role Playing Game. Now, there's a lot of these out there already. The most notable one out there is World of Warcraft. So if you're familiar with that type of title, that's what I'm going to be talking about with Final Fantasy XIV. So first off, Final Fantasy XIV promised several things uh, coming from Final Fantasy XI. Those of you who are not familiar with the series, Final Fantasy started a long, long time ago as a basically a single-player RPG. And... Uh, Recently, in the, I think early 2000s, they came out with Final Fantasy XI, which was the first MMORPG Final Fantasy. And uh, Final Fantasy XIV is kind of their second iteration of that type of game. They've already went through Final Fantasy XII, Final Fantasy XIII, which were kind of the, kind of the traditional Final Fantasies. Um, but Final Fantasy XIV take, takes it to the MMORPG realm. Again, and they promise that we're going to have faster... Uh, more involved combat from Final Fantasy XI, that was one of the promises I heard. Uh, that it was going to be easier for casual MMO players to get involved. Final Fantasy XI was a little bit intimidating for casual MMO players, so they, they wanted to make that a little bit easier for those guys. Uh, obviously a graphical overhaul, they wanted to make the game look a lot better than Final Fantasy XI. And then there was uh, the, the issues of travel. Uh, they wanted a, a much faster travel system. Uh, than the old Final Fantasy XI, you know, Chocobo slash teleport system. They wanted something a little bit easier with this iteration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it out into 12 topics. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it semi-short. Every time I say that, it turns out to be long, but I'm going to try to keep it semi-short. I'm going to split it out into 12 topics, six of which will be negative. I'm going to do the negative first. And then six of which will be positive points in terms of what my first impressions were with Final Fantasy XIV. So I'm going to start with the negative things and um, the fir very first thing, very first negative impression I want to talk about are the controls in terms of how to maneuver your character, how to do certain things, how to target, you know, those types of things. And Final Fantasy XIV, the initial impression you get when using the controls is not positive. It's very it's different from other control schemes. Um, it's obviously designed for consoles. Uh, once you use it, you'll see that when you use the mouse to maneuver, you have to hold down right click to pan the camera around, and you use the traditional WASD to move left and right. But it's not the way you think it is. It's very unintuitive. It seems like it's fighting you. Uh, a lot of the time. So even from the the beta, which I was a part of, till now with the release copy, it is it is a it's a negative because it's hard to get used to. It's not easy for new users to use it. Even as a I'm a seasoned uh, Final Fantasy XI player, and I still found it. You know, it was it's not as smooth as it can be, especially with all the other MMOs out there who have much better control schemes. Mainly because they're designed solely for the PC. Square Enix takes this approach of, we're going to design it for the console and the PC, but give them the exact same controls. Which is why it's kind of counterintuitive to begin with. They're trying to combine two into one instead of creating a separate control scheme for the PC and a separate control scheme for the consoles. Combining them two into one creates an atmosphere of frustration for the user. Now I talked about the, the, the keyboard and the mouse as being one of the primary mechanisms of control for Final Fantasy XIV, but you can hook up a controller. I have a SciTech here, uh, SciTech uh, Cyborg. It's a Cyborg controller uh, and it um, it worked better than the keyboard and mouse. So if you are a console gamer you'll probably feel right at home if you use that. The uh, the controller to control the characters and move around. But I found that when I did use that for a while, I, I was able to move it, maneuver the camera and move around a lot better, but targeting was very, very challenging. So I was frustrated with the keyboard and mouse movement, I was frustrated with controller movement, but I, I was able to find a happy medium simply by sticking with keyboard only. And this is what I did with Final Fantasy XI. 
Um, I tried to come in here with the into Final Fantasy XIV with an open mind, open approach, and say, okay, I'm going to use the controls how they say they think I should use them. So I used the keyboard and mouse, and the mouse panning around and stuff was was very frustrating. So sticking with keyboard, if I if you're going to get this game, stick with the keyboard only or the uh, controller only. Uh, I found that using the keyboard, using the I, J, K, and L to maneuver the camera and the W, A, S, D to maneuver the character works better for me because I can I can target a lot better with the keyboard uh, and uh, than I can with the controller. So very very frustrating with this this control scheme uh, with Final Fantasy XIV. Now the second point I want to talk about is target ownership. What do I mean by that? I mean that when you select a target that you want to attack you basically own that target and nobody else can attack it. This is something that uh, Square Enix did in Final Fantasy XI. They made it to where, you know, you target something, you're attacking it, it turns, uh, I think, red, like a pinkish red, and that means nobody else can attack it but your party. Now, they're doing a similar thing in fourteen, but it's kind of broken, um, mainly because they're, they're doing a new approach to quests. They have these things called leave quests, and once you activate a leave quest, mobs will spawn that are basically yours. Nobody else in the game can attack them but you. But people can see them. So you'll see a mob spawn right in front of you, try to attack it, and then it'll say the target is an invalid target. It doesn't tell you why, it just says that's an invalid target. And you get these, I mean you're running around hunting and you just get these random invalid targets and it's very very frustrating, especially if you're just getting started in the game. You're like, there's a mob, I want to attack it. Why can't I attack it? And then sometimes it'll it'll flip on and off. It's like you'll attack, start attacking a mob, and then it'll start attacking you, and then in the middle of that sequence, it'll say that it's an invalid target. Oh, but the monster's still attacking you. So you're sitting there getting hit, and you can't hit back. Very very frustrating. Now, in a, in a couple patch iterations, that has kind of died off. I haven't seen that in about a week. I haven't seen that happen, but it has happened in retail to me, um, and I was very, very frustrated. So, targeting, uh, ownership, just ownership of mobs and the whole system needs a lot of work. The third thing, in terms of first impressions and the negatives, are the market wards. Um, What's the market ward one? Market wards are an area designated for players to buy and sell goods. And what Final Fantasy XIV has employed is a system called retainers, where you hire a non-player character to just sit there and sell your items. And actually kind of buy items as well. I'll explain that in a little bit. And what they're trying to do is uh, try to create an atmosphere of a open market or sort of a replacement for Final Fantasy XI's auction house, which Final Fantasy XIV doesn't have, which is a problem in itself. So finding items to buy, finding better weapons, finding better, uh, better armor outside of what the vendors sell is very, very hard. It is not easy at all. Because what you have to do is that you have to navigate through several instances of these market wars. They have like maybe six or seven instances, of which have different retainers. You go to each retainer, you browse their bazaar to see what items they're selling. And there's no way to tell who's selling what. So basically you have to click on every character, browse every ward, and see, hmm, what do you have? 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 And you have to do this hundreds of times. There's a lot of retainers in there. Very, very repetitive, very bad implementation. Now there's posts out there where Square went on record to say that they're going to patch this particular capability and allow filtering and searching and organization of the market wards. Is that going to be enough? I don't know. Is that going to be better than an auction house? Which is rumored to be coming because there's actual auction house buildings in the game. But other than that, there's not much else to designate that auction houses are actually coming. Um, it's very, very frustrating. And this is a, an element of the game that's important. As you level up, you're going to need better armor. You're going to need better, uh, better weapons. So 
you know, the NPCs, the, 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 the vendors can only sell so much. They're not going to be as good as what people can craft and what people find on, on mobs and things. So finding items is very, very challenging. The market wards is, uh, uh, I call it a travesty. To me, it's one of the major glaring issues with Final Fantasy XIV. Okay, the fourth thing I want to talk about with uh, the negatives and my first impressions are the UI design. When I say UI, I mean user interface. The design is, I don't even know the word for it, it's just confusing. Because just like I said with the controls, Square Enix is trying to combine a console and a PC game interface into one. And it's not gelling very well. Especially if you're coming from the PC front. Um, like I said, if you, use a, if you use a controller, it's a little bit better, better. But even with that, let me give you an example. When you go through what's called a leave quest, these are uh, quests that are designated to, to give you um, rewards and, and XP, uh, you can do crafting leave quests. And what they do is they give you the crafting materials. Very, very cool, because you don't have to go out and farm the materials. You can level up crafting very quickly. They give you the materials, but to activate the crafting, it takes anywhere from five to eight screens. When I say screens, I mean dialogues that pop up. Boom, 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 boom. It takes like five to eight screens to even get started crafting. And <laughs> it takes too long. It is too much work. And there's, there's, I think there's maybe three or four, no, I'll say two or three dialogues that are redundant. They say the same information in a different way. So it looks like so many, it looks like, like 10 different people designed this. There's no uniformity, there's no gelling of the UI design, and that's just one example. I mean, the menu system, uh, just how you navigate through the menus and stuff, it's just not working. It's very, very counterintuitive. New users, even Final Fantasy XI players are going to be like, what the heck is this? Because Final Fantasy XI's UI wasn't that great either. This one is even worse, in my opinion. It is definitely worse than Eleven's, and uh, but there's room for improvement. It's not, you know, it's not the end of the world. But right now, in this current state, it's not good at all. So I think the UI design needs to be, I need, I think it needs to be rethought. Um, I think some some dialogues need to be removed because they're redundant. I think, uh, I just think the whole idea of of, of combining the console and the PC, I, I'm going to say it again, combining the console, PC, uh, UI into one interface is a mistake in the way that they're doing it. Hopefully they can find a better way to do it. Now the fifth thing I want to discuss in terms of negatives is also has to do with the UI, but it's UI lag. The UI is slow. When you click on an item, it takes anywhere from one to three seconds for it to respond in a lot of cases. And combined with the UI design and the UI lag, it's a formula for frustration. It's like, hurry up, hurry up. Oh my goodness, hurry up. One of the, one of the uh, prime examples is a screen where you assign your actions. And you, you, you know, you give it, you're given a certain amount of action points. As you level up, you learn different skills. You can assign skills to several slots. This interface feels very server side in that it's not really on the client. It's like you have to tell the server, okay, I want to put this action in this slot. And it's like everything is on the server. It's like you, you, you click on something, there's no responsiveness at all. You have to wait for things to show up. Anyway, I'm telling you, some things take up to 5 to 10 seconds. Just to move an action from one slot to the next takes... 10 to 20 seconds. That's just awful latency. That's awful response time. And combined with that UI lag and that, I mean, combined with that UI design, this is a perfect formula for frustration. I mean, it, especially if you're giving the game a try, you want to like it, even if you're not a Final Fantasy fan, you're like, hey, a new MMO, I want to try it out. You hit this, and it's just like, oh, come on. It, 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 and I don't know if it's going away. I don't know if they're going to change that. I don't know if they're going to speed it up. But it is a huge problem. Huge, huge problem. Just overall UI responsiveness is very, very slow. 
And the final thing I want to talk about in terms of first impressions and negatives is the bugs. There are just several little minor quirks that makes the MMO feel not done. I mean, and you can easily say that. This is typical for MMOs. MMOs always start out buggy. They always implement patches. They, don't, they never release them done. They're always half done. Which is true in a lot of cases. But you can't ignore it. I mean, some of the ones I, I encountered here, there's an infamous black screen where you, after you log in, you just get a black screen. There's just a black nothing. So you have to close out the game, try to log in again. And there's a good chance you'll get it again. And again. And again. And you don't know why. It's very, very frustrating. There's other things having to do with, you know, your character just being stuck in the game. And you have to wait for the timeout to come back in. Various crashes. Random crashes. There was even, there was a very serious bug which was recently patched. That in some rare cases, users could get a corrupted item in their inventory. And if they try to use that item or move that item somewhere, it would crash the entire server. The entire server would crash because of one corrupt item. Bugs, man. They're just bugs, 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 bugs. Make it, and they patched it. I'm glad they patched it. It should be gone. But still, that's just an indicator of all the bugs that are, that are in this game. And there's more. And you'll, you'll encounter them. And, you know, if you're, if you're serious about the game getting better, you should report them. You should tell Square Enix about it, file a ticket, you know, open a case for it, tell them about the bug, and hopefully they'll get to it. But still, these are issues. These are valid problems that are uh, occurring in Final Fantasy XIV. So now you're probably thinking, Buona, man, you are really tearing this game up. You are just ripping it apart. Uh, there's got to be something good going on with Final Fantasy XIV. And there is. There's, there's several things that I want to talk about in terms of good first impressions that I had with Final Fantasy XIV. The first is um, how the game grows on you. The longer you play Final Fantasy XIV, the greater the immersion. Uh, let me explain that. All those issues I talked about, they're kind of like learning curve things, like the UI lag, the UI interface. They're bad, but you get used to them, and you learn ways to work around them, and you, you, you know, where you have six or seven dialogues, you know they're coming. So you can go through them pretty fast. Instead of having to read and determine what it is, you can just say, oh, I'm going to get this, boom, 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 boom. And what used to take 45 seconds now takes 20 seconds. So you get faster. You get better. And as you, you get past these issues, as you ignore, you get to the meat of the game. You get into the immersion factor. You, you see your character growing. You see your character leveling up. You see that the, the various aspects of the story system. You're, you're finding out more and more about the backstory of characters and what's going on in the world. The whole immersion aspect of the MMO starts to kick in the longer you play. And it's Final Fantasy. So they're going to come through. It's very, very good lore in here. So I, I think that's a definite positive first impression that I had. I kind of hit that mark where I was like, okay, I'm over the initial frustrations now this game is starting to get kind of fun. So the initial immersion is a, a, a definitely a, a positive first impression I had. The second thing I wanted to, to talk about in terms of a positive first impression are the leave quests. And what are, they're like, people are like, what are, what are these leave quests? Things, these are a designated set of quests which are designed for certain levels of players. They have them broken out by level. And they're there to give you things to do as if there is not enough to do. But basically, you can come in, and they give you a certain amount of quests. And they're typical MMO quests. Go kill 10 of these, go till, kill 9 of these, go talk to this person, go do this, go give this person this. Here, and you're basically an errand boy uh, for a lot of these quests. They give you a good amount of currency. Earning currency has, was a problem in Final Fantasy XI. A lot of people didn't know how to make gil, and they resorted to buying gil, which is not a a very good practice in MMOs. Um, they resort to buying guild. These leave quests reward you with guild and they kind of fill up your wallet. And what you can do is you can do a, like I think it's 16 of these that you can do, maybe 16 or 14, and they reset every 36 hours. And people are like, man, but that sucks. Why do they have to reset? Why, why can't I do them anytime I want? Why is there a limit? Well, like I said, they give you a good amount of reward. They give you a good amount of the XP. Like, for example, last night I, I started with a, a level one, um, I think it was level one, 
uh, gladiator class, which is a, a fighter class, basically a tank class. And I did three leave quests, and I went from level one to level four in a matter of minutes. So they give you a good boost of XP. They give you a good boost of, uh, of, of gil, which is the currency in the game. And they reset every 36 hours, and it's very, I think it's very, very good. Also, they have crafting lead quests. And if you want to get into crafting, but you don't want to go out and farm, you know, seven beehive chips and 25, I don't know, rock, rock salt and blah, blah. You don't want to go out and farm that, but you want to level up quests. They have crafting lead quests, which actually give you the materials and allow you to skill up your crafting like that. So it's an easy way for casual, this is the way that, that Square is going to bring in the casual MMO players. You can do these lead quests. And just level up. And just keep leveling up, leveling up. And crafting contributes to your physical level. So as you craft, you're actually going to be getting bigger and stronger characters. Um, great idea. I really think it's a great idea. And the 36-hour timer is not that bad. Because outside of the lead quest, you can do all the traditional MMO things. You can do quests. You can go farming. You can do your own crafting. Plenty to do. Plenty of jobs to level up. But these lead quests get you focused on that particular part. So I think the Leap Quest is a great idea. I haven't seen any MMO do it. If you guys know of any MMOs that have done it before, let me know. I have never seen it. Uh, and uh, I think the reset, the 36 hours, is very reasonable because I find myself, when I've been playing, it's like I never felt that, hey, I wish the Leap Quest timer would hurry up because there was so much other stuff to do. So Leap Quest time, I, I mean, I'm sorry, the Leap Quests are a great idea. Final Fantasy XIV. Positive numero three that I want to talk about are crafting things in Final Fantasy. I should say it's crafting. It is crafting in Final Fantasy XIV. I was so happy to see this because the crafting in Final Fantasy XI was not very satisfying. Uh, you basically got on one knee, started levitating a, a, an exploding crystal, and then all of a sudden it exploded and out pop your items. Uh, I call it one-click crafting. Very boring. It can get very tedium, very boring, not a whole lot involved. With this crafting system, let me tell you, even with the UI design and the different screens, once you get into it, it is very, very satisfying because you're actually going through stages and building up towards the final product. So you go through several levels of synthesis. You have standard synthesis, you have fast synthesis, and you have bold synthesis, and each of which can give you different characteristics of your final output item. And uh, this is what the, 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 main, the, uh, the main crafting, like alchemy, blacksmithing, and things like that. So you'll see a nice little animation. It's not just one click and then boom, out pops something. Every different crafting uh, profession has a different animation. For example, if you're a blacksmith, you'll break out an anvil. You'll see them hidden on an anvil. Uh, if you're uh, a weaver, you'll see somebody doing some sewing. Uh, with the alchemy, you'll have this thing, this contraption that you're pulling the lever back and forth, making rubber or whatever you're making. Um, and it goes through several stages, and then you get to the final point. It actually makes it, it makes you feel like you're actually making it. It actually makes you feel like you're crafting. Instead of just click craft, okay, I failed. Click craft, okay, I made it. Click craft, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's satisfying. And you can easily, if, with this game, you can just do crafting and nothing else. Literally, you can do crafting and nothing else. Because the, it, once they improve the market wards, you can sell stuff you make to get more materials. You don't even have to farm if you don't want to. You'll get stronger, so you can actually venture out and not get one-shotted by a, 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 a tiny rabbit, <laughs> you know. Uh, and uh, since crafting does contribute towards your physical level, it's a very rewarding crafting system, and just like with and and with mining as well, with the the disciples of the hand stuff, they have botanists, miners, uh, fishing, um, very very involved. It's, it's 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 a very nice system. I played a lot with with the mining. You first designate a spot. You, the first thing in mining is that you first have to find uh, a spot to mine, and it's like exposed ore, and it's like some some glistening spot. So you first determine where. On that spot, are you going to start hitting? Is it going to be close to the exposed door, or is it going to be far away? Once you determine that, you strike either close to that point or farther away from that point, and it'll give you feedback. Like it'll say, "Oh, you feel something," 
but you can't get extracted. So that means you probably should either hit the same point or a little bit away from it. And they'll say, oh, you found nothing. You're getting further away from the mark. Or you, you found something. Keep, you know, it'll encourage you to adjust. So you're going through the process. It's not just hit, you found something. Hit, you didn't find something. Hit, you know, it, it's not that one-click crafting. It is, is, is very, very well done. It's probably one of my favorite aspects of the game. If you come on my live stream and I'm playing Final Fantasy XIV and you see me crafting, that's probably why I really, really like the crafting system. Positive item number four that we're going to talk about with first impressions in Final Fantasy XIV are the professions. The way the professions are made is genius. And when you get the game, you know, and when people tell you about the game, you may get a little bit turned off because the game costs $10 a month just to activate the subscription. And then on top of that $10 a month, you have to pay $2.99 per character slot. And you're like, what the heck? I have to buy character slots? Boy, boy that's stupid. I should be able to play as many characters as I want. You know, you really don't understand why until I explain this to you. Every character in Final Fantasy, no matter what character you pick, can do anything. You're not limited to one job. You're not limited to one profession. One character can do anything. Anything. All at the same time. Not, I mean, not all at the same time, but if you want a character to be a pugilist, which is a hand-to-hand -hand combat, you can do that. And then you can switch over to another job. And then you can switch over to mining. You can switch over to fishing. You can switch over to a mage. You can switch over to a ranger. All on the same character. And not only can you switch, because Final Fantasy XI allows you to switch too. But you can combine abilities from several jobs to customize your character. This is genius. Let me explain that a little bit more. Say you level up your pugilist, which is a hand-to-hand, -hand, like, monk-like class, all right? And uh, you want to add some mage spells. For example, say you want to add fire or stone or cure or stone skin. You level up your conjurer, which is a mage, get those skills, and then you go back to your pugilist and you can add those mage skills to your conjure. I mean, to your uh, pugilist. So not only can your pugilist do hand to hand, he can also do mage spells. And then on top of that, he can get buffs. He can go level up his uh, uh, the gladiator and get skills like rampart, which can increase his defense. So you can essentially make your character more of a tank by getting some of the tank skills. And you can mix and match these skills to give you virtually endless possibilities and customizations capabilities. This is something I haven't seen before. Um, it, it's very, very granular, very, very open. Uh, not every character can do everything, but there's a lot of different combinations. Very, 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 very large amount of combinations. And as you level up, as you, you know, you get to like level 10, which only takes a couple of days, maybe two to three days, you begin to see, hey, this is pretty cool. Because I, when I was able to get my pugilist to do some, some, uh, some spells on top of the pounding he, he was putting on the mobs, I was, I was like happy. I mean, in Final Fantasy XI, you had the sub-job system, which was limited. It was very, very limited. You, you know, your sub-job could only be half the level of your, as your main job, and, you know, certain combinations just didn't work. Here, you can, I mean, it's like the a la carte of professions. You can take this, this, I want the peas, I want the corn, I want the rice, you know. You basically take all the things you want from all the classes and build your own customized character. And that's ingenious. I mean, that's going to, a lot of people are going to like that. So, I, I, I think the, 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 the way the professions are done is definitely a positive first impression. Number five, the fifth positive thing that I want to talk about is the challenge. Boy, the challenge? Yes, the challenge. I'm the type of player that, when I play a game, I like to be challenged. I like difficult games. Um, I like when a game makes it so things are very, very easy. And I talked about some of the aspects of this game where, uh, where they cater to casual players and the leave quests and things like that. I, and you know, when I first saw that, I was like, well, I hope they didn't make it too easy. And I was right. The challenge is still there. Outside of these leave quests... And I talked about the crafting. The crafting system is not easy. It is involved, it is immersive, and it is not easy. A lot of the items take several different combinations of materials that are not going to be easy to find. 
And Final Fantasy XI was a, a, a very similar in this regard. It's probably one of the things that hooked me. It wasn't easy. There was a challenge there. So while we have the stuff there that's for the casual players to get involved, they don't have to play as much. They can just log in, do their leave quest, log out, and get a substantial amount of XP and gil. The hardcore players, the players who like the challenge, that stuff is there for you as well. You can go out and hunt. You can go out and solo. You can go out and do other things. You can do traditional crafting. Uh, you can do traditional leveling. You can do traditional exploring. You can find all the quests that are there. That whole MMO hardcore element is there. Now, this is first impression, so I really can't talk about Endgame. But Endgame is a challenge as well. So hopefully the Endgame in Final Fantasy XIV will come through. Kind of premature, because I don't think anybody's even got close to in-game levels in Final Fantasy XIV yet. Um, but man, the challenge is there. You'll see it. If you play this game, I mean, just the initial getting into the game, you know, the learning curve, Square is very, they're, they're known for doing that. You have to go in and figure things out. They're not going to hold your hand. They're not going to tell you how to do everything. And frankly, I don't want them to. You know, I do want to learn how to do the controls and how to move things around, and they do have tutorials for that. But I don't want them to point me everywhere to go for everything. You know, I don't want that. That takes the fun out of the exploration element of an RPG. Now, the, now the starter quest that's there, they do tell you everything, what to do, where to go. They even show you on the map where to go. And this is good for new users. This is a starter quest. But for other stuff, I want to figure it out. I want that challenge, and that challenge is there. Positive item number six, which is the final positive thing I want to talk about, is the look and feel. You knew I was going to talk about it. The game's graphics are drop dead gorgeous. This is the best looking MMO I have played to date, easily, by far. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's literally a work of art on the screen. It is so beautiful. Not only the cutscenes, the cutscenes, you knew the cutscenes were going to be beautiful. They're CGI rendered. Uh, the opening movie is, 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 is breathtaking. Uh, the cutscenes are, are very, very well done. But the game itself just looks and feels so good. Uh, and it requires a pretty, pretty substantial amount of hardware to run it. If you look at their recommended system specs, I believe it does list the Core i7 as recommended, even though you can play it on a, on a, like a, um, a dual-core system, I believe. I think it's dual-core. That you can play it on, but it it it's <laughs> the game is is has hefty system requirements, but it looks and feels so good, and that that's that helps with the immersion. I know graphics don't make the game, guys. I'm I'm just telling you from a first impressions point of view, the immersion factor, the look and feel is going to grab you by the face and grab and pull you into the game because it looks so good. Now a lot a lot of people out there don't like the look of Final Fantasy. I I personally love it. Um, and uh, I think it's it's just out, absolutely outstanding. Kind of a bonus uh, uh, positive that I'm just thinking about is the music. Uh, the music is very well done. I've already, I've already bought the soundtrack. Uh, there was two albums. I think they were like seven dollars or some change on each on uh, iTunes. Very very good soundtrack. It's Final Fantasy is always going to have good music, so that's no surprise there. Um, but those are all of my first impressions. Six of them. Uh, I mean, the game gets better the longer you play. The leap quests are great. Uh, crafting is well done. Um, what I say? The professions are genius that you can mix and match abilities. Uh, the challenge is there. The look and feel of the game is overwhelming, and the music is great. So there's a lot of good things to talk about with Final Fantasy XIV. So overall, I mean, you can skip to this point if you just want to know. Somebody mark it in the comments. This is the point where Buena says his recommendation. Overall, I think the game has many barriers to entry. Um, I think it, it has a lot of different hurdles that could hurt it in the long run and the short run. Um, a lot of things, you know, the UI, the, the lag, the bugs, the control scheme, a lot of those factors are important enough for a lot of users to turn away and not even go beyond the first month and uh, it, it, it could really really hurt things and the targeting system and the target ownership can make you rage and just throw down the controller or just turn the game off and say I'm just not going to even bother with this particular game. Uh, the positives do make it fun. 
like I was talking about, the positives make the game very, very enjoyable. As you get over those hurdles, things get better. But you gotta that that, that initial hump is very hard to get over. And you gotta be patient. And a lot of us don't think we should be patient or have to be patient with a video game. And you know, that's an opinion you can have. Um but I believe if Square Enix doesn't address a lot of these issues, uh, it could really hurt their sales. It could really hurt their first impressions. And people like me who post first impression videos are going to tell other people that, hey, you know, you're not going to like this game in the beginning, but it'll get better. So, overall, I think I, I like the game. I think it's fun. Uh, I'm a Final Fantasy XI uh, veteran. I, 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 I love the 11, Final Fantasy XI game. A lot of you didn't. I respect that. Um, and I have put up with a lot of these quirks that I described here before. Uh, a lot of these things were, were, were prevalent in 11, but I got over them. I got past them. And, uh, and uh, I don't think a lot of you out there are going to do that. And I don't think a lot of you out there are willing to do that. So if you watch this video for the purposes of maybe purchasing this game, know that those initial hurdles could really be frustrating. So while I believe I, I can continue playing this game and have fun with it, it's really hard for me to recommend it. Um, it's really hard for me to recommend it because there's a lot of issues, a lot of things that are going to make you upset, a lot of things that are going to frustrate you. And uh, I think I'm, I'm going to give it a rating of a 6 out of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Knows I had 6 for it. That no, all makes sense. A 6 out of 10. And my recommendation is going to be to wait. Um, if, you're, if you're interested in this game, and you're not willing to go over those hurdles that I discussed. Um, I really believe that you should wait for a few more patches to come out. I really believe that you should wait for the market wars, the things to be fixed, the auction house to come, hopefully. Um, a lot of different things need to be addressed, and I think you should wait. And I think if those things are addressed, it'll jump up to maybe a 7 or 7.5 out of 10. And I think at that point, I can say this is recommended for some people. But right now... I wouldn't recommend it. I will tell you to wait. Um, 6 out of 10 here for Buona from Buona.tv. Alright guys, take care. I hope you enjoyed this fairly lengthy review. Hopefully I didn't bore you to tears. And uh, Final Fantasy XIV for PC. I am on the Wu-Tai server. Uh, my name is... Uh, I'm not even going to say my name. I'll put it. For you. Look, that's my name. Google it if you don't know what it is. Look at it. Google it. <laughs> Actually use Google Translate and you'll be... You'll actually have better better success there. All right, this is one from Boy TV. Final Fantasy 14 for PC. Six out of ten, guys. Don't get it yet. Wait for the patches. All right, take care.